Rebuilding a model steam plant. This one is part 10. Completing the rebuild of the Stuart Models 10V steam engine. This episode shows many aspects of the way it now runs. The only problem left is the inaccurately machined flywheel and I will deal with that shortly when I manage to order a flywheel casting from Stuart Models. This cold that I caught recently from my granddaughter is taking a long time to go away and I apologise for the sound quality of the voiceover. Here's the engine on the bench. What I'm currently doing is double checking the valve timing. I'm going to run this clip another couple of times. You can clearly see and hear when the compressed air is being admitted to the cylinder and it's just before the piston reaches top and bottom dead centre. The purpose of this valve timing is to cushion the reciprocating parts at the end of each stroke. If the valve timing is late, then the engine will knock at the end of each stroke. It's a bit of a compromise. You know when it's right, the engine sounds right. If admission is too early, then the engine will not run very well slowly. The thing that really bothers me about this engine is the flywheel. At first I thought the crankshaft was bent, but I'll show later on in this video that it definitely isn't. It's the flywheel. Whoever machined this did it carelessly and actually wrong. The way I machine flywheels is to set the flywheel up held by the external part of it in a four-jaw chuck. I'm only really interested in the early stages that the inside edge of the flywheel, the parts between the spokes, runs as concentrically as possible when the flywheel is running perfectly true, or as near as I can get it, then I machine the centre boss on one side only. Some machinists never bother truing up the centre boss, and this really annoys me. I am not a machinist, I'm a musician, and believe me, my brain works in a very different way. I've even watched a few YouTube videos. I'm not going to mention any names, but one machinist who shows people how to do things never machines the outer diameter of the centre boss and when the engine's running I think it looks awful. This flywheel is all over the place. I don't think there's any surface on it that's actually true. What I'm going to do for a bit of fun is remove the paint and attempt to remachine this flywheel. Did I just say a bit of fun? I think I need to get out more. Adequate lubrication on steam engines, irrespective of the size, is extremely important. A Stuart No. 10 is actually listed as a high-speed engine, and it really does run fast. Running small engines like this one at very high speeds is a bit of a problem, because the oil is just thrown out of the bearings. In this clip the engine is running at a moderate speed, it will go a lot faster than this. I'm just checking its power output, which for its size is really good. Don't forget this engine cylinder is only three quarters of an inch in diameter. Well the bit where the piston is anyway. The engine has a very strange sound at bottom dead centre and that is because the port face is slightly pitted at the bottom part. I didn't deem it necessary to remove so much metal to get a perfect finish. This is a can of WD-40 and I'm going to use this to lower the viscosity of the oil that I'm using to lubricate the parts. Be careful if you do this though because don't forget WD-40 is not a particularly good lubricant. Not for small steam engines anyway. I use compounded bearing oil from a company called Hallett Oils and I usually add a small amount of rapeseed oil or canola oil into the mix. This acts as an anti-friction additive and it is quite effective. Apart from the wonky flywheel, this engine is really good and it's running extremely well. Running slowly, without the slow motion being used, you can see and hear how sweetly this engine runs. And by blasting the bearings with WD-40, it's now running much cleaner as all the dirty oil has been flushed out, so I stopped the engine and re-oiled it. And then... Yeah. 
I think I can safely say that this engine is OK. Nothing fell off it with that incredibly high speed run. I was feeding the engine with about £60 per square inch of compressed air. And once again, after that run, I re-oiled every moving part. Here the engine is sat on a piece of Scotsbrite, because don't forget, as I've mentioned many times, my workbench is designed as a soundboard. In the next section of this video, I'm going to place both of the engines on the steam plant's base. And by splitting the compressed air line, as you can see, they both run very well indeed. Behind the engines, you can see the boiler that I'm going to use, which is a really nice example of a Stuart 501 boiler. The tender with the brass top is nothing to do with the steam plant. That's part of my Great Northern Railway Stirling single. I've put the dynamo on its mounting in the shot. It's not connected up yet and nothing's bolted down. But you can see what it's going to look like. I just need to work out the piping so that it's neat and economical. The more eagle-eyed viewers will notice that there isn't any cladding in place on the cylinders on either of these engines. Fitting the cylinder cladding will definitely be the last job. I would really hate to go to the trouble of making and fitting cladding only to damage it or even scratch it when piping the engines to the boiler. In this clip I've put a couple of lamps in place. These are part of the steam plant and they will be powered by the dynamo but I'm going to make it so they can be switchable because I have a really nice external lighting diorama that I bought recently with a collection of engines. And here is the lighting diorama. It was originally powered by an S50 connected to a bicycle dynamo via a small elastic band. There's also a comprehensive switch panel so you can switch different lights on and off. It's a really nice thing and I'm going to include this as part of this steam plant. There will be a connecting lead from the diorama which will plug into the baseboard of the main steam plant. But I haven't got that far yet. The next thing I'm going to tackle will be the boiler and the burner. I need to make a condenser for the plant, but once it's finished it will be really good. I mentioned earlier on in this video that the crankshaft is not bent in the slightest, and here's the engine running quite happily without the flywheel. What a great engine! It will even run fairly well at slow speed without the flywheel. That's about it for this video. In the next one, as I've mentioned, I'm going to have a go at reprofiling the existing flywheel. And here it is, sat on the bench. But hopefully, if I can get through to Stuart Models on the phone, a new flywheel casting should arrive shortly. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.